<laughs> so now have you been like rebuying throwbacks from Mitchell and Ness in sizes that make sense? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've got a couple. Uh, I tried to, you know, what what everything I was doing with the projects, it was kind of 90s themed. So I kind of tried to get some 90s players and uh, some jerseys that were from the 90s. I've, I've done that. Who do you think are the ultimate 90s athletes? Like when, um, you, when you think that's Michael some, Jordan. Michael's, the, he's a good right. one. He's at the top of the totem pole. But, uh, you know, the Magic Johnson, that era was in there. Um, even Bird, you know, it was just a, it was a, it was a great level of talent within the NBA and within sports in that time. You know, the '90s to me overall is just the golden era of everything. Everything, pretty much. Hip hop, <laughs> basketball. Yeah, yeah it's just a, it's just a great Fashion. time. Not to say, you know, I don't want to. Want the you know the young guys to look at it like oh you, you, you hating on this generation which I'm not you know there's great things about this generation and stuff too but it just uh, and I think that it might get lost in transition too because they'll look at their era as the golden era even though it's not really not but they'll look at it because they're living in it too and they think that maybe we feel like that because we grew up in that era but, I mean, but, but, but Fab that probably is why we feel that way not really because they're still being Jordan sold today which are from original releases of the 90s. There's still brands coming back from the 90s that, that are, are still, still successful today. Very right. True. So, but there's no doubt about it that where we were in our lives make us love things from the 90s even more. Kids love, I think Jordans are bigger now than they were in the 90s okay, because well, fine, they were but, too expensive. But what for, if you look outside of Jordan, right? Like, mm -hmm. do, you, do you think musically, I mean, keep in mind, I'm, I'm obsessed. It's my favorite music of all time, but was the the hip hop being made in the nineties actually better, or were I think we the just quality of people? it? And we didn't do it. It wasn't really so much done for money. Even everybody now raps about this, all about the money. There's don't call me if you if it ain't about the money. There's, you know, everything is so pushed towards the hustle where, you know, there was artists making money at the time or talking about money, but there was so much diversity in hip hop too. There was gangster rap. There was you know, backpack rap, there was flashy, flossy rap, there was uh, De La Soul kind of psychedelic rap. There was, you know, it was all different kind of versions. You're, and, and you're weird, stuff. you're an interesting guy though because you have always sort of, with the exception of your quick ascension through mixtapes, you've always been pretty mainstream, mm -hmm. but you've always also been really into hip hop. Right. But like, it's not like you were, You've been mainstream since you came out. I mean, right. your first single was a hit. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're sort of an anomaly in that sense. But I come from mixtapes. Uh, so I always had a deeper root to mixtapes. And um, I think they've continued to be uh, um, a platform for artists to just showcase their talent versus, you know, when you're putting out albums. When I put out albums, you have to keep the cash register ringing and you have to make hit singles and you have to do collaborations and have R&B hooks on, you know, it, it, it's a business as well too and it's radio and, you know, but at the same time I know my hip hop, I know where it comes from, I know what I grew up listening to, I knew what, how hip hop has evolved. I've seen through the 90s have, where artists have become bosses almost and had their own brands and had clothing lines and stuff like that. So I've seen the whole evolution of it just even coming from that era too. Now it's just like pretty normal. Everybody comes out next thing, next week they have a clothing line. Next week they got a yeah. headphone. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's not even I mean, a move by anymore. The way, it's like by the part way, of what are they gonna do. be? Are they just gonna keep being more fucking headphones? This thing never gonna stop. It's funny about the <laughs> headphone thing too because I was like, well, how many people can just say like they got the best headphones? Well, at, well, like, what is the difference between the fucking headphones? Like, look, I got Meek's joints. Khaled's over here. We have Beats by Dre. I it's mean, like, take your pick. Let me tell you. Oh, what, well, I'm sure if you ask them, they will give you a defined definition of, of why what makes them better. Right. It's all bullshit. All right, that's what I tell you. The company who's gonna. And by the way, I think Khaled's headphones are really. Really got to really like them. I like my beats; they're just fine. I mean, listen, they all equally gave me the same amount of money, zero. What? Right. Um, <laughs> and and the thing is, the the company that I think is going to make money in the headphones game is the company that comes out and says, "Hey guys, you now people sell you four hundred fifty five hundred dollar headphones. There's nothing worth it in headphones Yo, over I, like a hundred and fifty bucks." I was 
I was really shocked. I wasn't shocked by the, I was shocked by the inflation of how much people are paying for it's headphones. It's crazy. I grew up with Kobe headphones for twenty dollars, and yeah. you know, riding to school every day with those headphones, and you know, they would break after a while. But you it was twenty dollars, huh? and you That's know, maybe it. it went up to thirty at, at some point. But it, it felt like a reasonable number for you to have good sound. I mean, I just now four hundred is. Crazy. I just want to put this out 400? there right now. You have kids, 15-year-olds, they want $400 Those headphones. Those ones he's wearing, that I'm wearing, mm-hmm. these are in the 400 300, range. Yeah, 350, at least 299 How much are these? Do you know? I don't know how much those are, but I know the- it's I know 300 the, And I know mm. those Khalids are in the 400 range. And now that it's not even expensive. It's like that's the norm. Right. So here's what I'm saying. I want to put, uh, I want to say, I want to tell you, costs, whatever companies out there that want, like cost makes a great- Low end, they look like our old headphones, except they fold up, like they have the metal shit. Mm-hmm. I want to get down with a headphone company that says we don't sell four hundred dollar headphones. We sell really good fifty dollar headphones because mm-hmm. I think it's ridiculous that it's sort of expected now that kids, you kind of look like a chump if you don't have yeah, if you have the right. fucking because it became the cool thing. It, it, it's cool for you to have. They're not listening. different, but Just, I disagree with you. Which I want to be I I want to be a part of the four hundred dollar headphones. <laughs> yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> And that's why you're successful and I'm a failure. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how it goes. I just roll with, that's that's why I've been around this long. Will you be coming out with your line of headphones? Um, no, nah, I have works? no headphones in uh, in the works. Of, of what right are now. you doing, man? You gotta what get your happening? headphones. Um, I mean, get you your know, life. A little, a small I'm just a little ones. late on the ball. I think some other people are too, but I'm just a little late All on right. the ball. All right, we'll keep waiting. Everyone Maybe. keep waiting for fabulous headphones. Yeah. Um, so you're dropping a tape on Christmas. It's actually like, is this an album? album. It's a full fledged project that we are dropping album. on iTunes. Yeah. I mean, I dropped mixtapes in the past, so I think that's why it's a lot of confusion whether it's a mixtape or an album. Are any of the songs from the last mixtape on this album? There is a redone version of Young OG on this album where okay. I put an extra verse to it, and it starts with the verse from the. But Soul no Taker. La Marina all summer? Nah, that's not. No. Right. Was that ever for sale? Uh. I don't think so. Cause you sort of stumbled on a smash with that song. Uh, not a pretty really. big I kind of, I, kind of I, I, I do those on purpose. You knew, really you knew stumbled. that was gonna yeah, be. I thought it was a good record. You Did know what's funny? One of the guy when we were working on it, one of the guys from the that was involved in the process, he was like, "I don't think we should put that record on the tape. I think it's too like, kitty or fun." I'm like, "Yo, you're bugging. First of all, it's urgent and it needs to be the. It, it's gospel. People have need to <laughs> speak on urgent? this bartender." <laughs> Epidemic that has hit our New York it's City true. clubs and, and people it have, needs were to be like, La Marina, like it was church, right? And Every La Marina Sunday. was just such a, and it was it was a thought activity, but it was you know we all were thoughts. We all enjoyed being a thought for you know the the <laughs> moment of going to La Marina. So you know people caught a fence, like you know what I mean. But it, you know I was a thought too. I was in La Marina before. But you it was, you it really was, did take the term thought to a different level. I mean, I didn't. I just, I just spoke on it. You had random bartender friends come up to you and be like, "What, what, what is this?" No, I think they just low key was like, "You trying to call me a thought?" <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, they did. Yo, and like the guest spot bartending thing is so nuts. There's flyers of like, "Look, I'm a hot chick with big tits. I'll be at this bar." Come In a out. onesie. I'll be I mean, a it's onesie. a hustle. So at the <laughs> end awesome. of the day, I, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it just get, it just goes too gets. It just gets out of hand a little bit. I like that you said it's an urgent situation that needed to be dealt with. Yeah. You were like, put a rush on this. The people need this. Get Mayor de Blasio on the phone. It's like when something (laughs) happens and, and like, you know, your regularly scheduled programming gets interrupted and the president walks out. Like, that's you needed. You wanted a TV special. I wanted I wanted a, a press conference from the White House. You know, we like weren't able to make that happen, but we did come. Tonight's season. episode of So and So will not be seen for the following presenta- news presentation. <laughs> and then Fab walks out and is like, "We need to talk about thoughts. Mm-hmm. They're out of control." Now, did Ebro stand us up? Is we just gonna, Why are you just bored? Are you bored talking? No, nah, I just was trying to be. This clear. is a podcast. No, I mean, no, it's kind of fun because we could talk. He's about supposed whatever. to be. He has I was two to see minutes. If I wore this Raider jacket for nothing. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have another two minutes till Ebro gets here. Yeah. Uh-huh. What do you think Ebro is going to bombard Fab with? What's his going to be like? His troll. He's going to say something trolly to him. What will his troll angle be? I don't know. I, don't know. I just roll right off a of troll angles like roll, roll right over and I'm like speed roll, bumps. You roll right over a troll? Like speed bumps, man. Um, speaking of something that would seem like a trolling angle, but it's not, it's actually quite the opposite. Mm-hmm. I did, I told you that I spent some time with the, your baby, I don't know what your relationship is. She, is Emily your baby mom's? That was, is you guys I mean, she would, she could fall in that category. She's your home, but she's like your people also, right? Aren't you guys good? I want I mean, is people, she, like, are yeah, you guys I mean, in a, 
relationship? Is she a girlfriend? Is she a girl? All right, it's getting weird now. See, yeah, okay, I was gonna right, ask fine. that. I was gonna ask that. Okay, but fine. She's definitely, no yeah, title. That's, she's that's, in your life. That's my lady. Family. Right. Okay, she's a family. Anyways, did she? Did I, did I tell you that I hung out with her in L.A. once? Mm, she's a um, fucking character. That one. I really, yeah. I like Emily a lot. Yeah, she was, a, she was just a hoot. I was with her and Amber. She's a hoot. <laughs> she's a hoot. She's fucking funny, man. All right, what this about to roll into? She was a cool. No, no, there's no, there's no <laughs> follow up. And then. And then what I saw was no nothing. Yeah. I just thought she was cool. I never met because I'd only heard about her, but I didn't watch. Y'all were on one of the, the show. TV shows, right? I wasn't on. She was on. She was on Love, Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. yeah, no, we I didn't, didn't know it from that. So from so for me, it was just like, yo, this is Fab's girl. Right. I didn't have any preconceived, you know, um, TV bullshit with her. But she was a cool chick, man. You know, yeah, you you always had these cool. amazing parties. You had a Boardwalk Empire themed birthday party, right? No, I had a. But what was it? Gatsby. Ugh. The Fabs, the great that, Fabs. Wasn't, wasn't invited. Wasn't that one? Yeah, that, I have that in common also. I, was, I still wasn't at that one either. No, honestly. I didn't get the invite to that one? No. Either. Yo, what? We have to get better mailing addresses for them. Like, No, you don't have anyone. There's no <laughs> mailing. Let me see what. I'll tell you what. I I probably have nine numbers for you, none of which were. I don't think I've ever called a number or email address of yours that's actually worked. Um, Who comes up with these themes? Because you seem to me. have the most amazing parties. I come up with all kinds. I just sit at home and come up with ways to celebrate myself in Amazing. great fashion. Ask him how many of those things in that phone are right. <laughs> Answer honestly. How many things in that phone? I'm just going to show it to him. I'm not going to Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. I just, how many of those things are actually right, Fab? How many of those could actually get you? Um, nope. Is this the iPhone 2? <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, I get an upgrade this week, man. Like, Chill. Like yo, I'm I like, told yeah. you. Yeah, I told you I want to work with the cheap headphone company <laughs> and I want to work with the iPhone 5, not the like, iPhone 6. Yo. Like when I even felt it, I'm like, is this an iPod or something? What is this? But an iPod. None it's of this information. None looks, of it looks legit. But it's an old phone with old information. No, no listen, that has nothing to do with it. This, the oldness of I my phone. I think you can't put new numbers. You can't put the iPhone six number in the I've iPhone got the three. It just, it's not a happen. three, dude. That's a five S. <laughs> you can't do That's it. That's a five S. Nah, it's not that not old. You just give I'm sorry, right Fab. I don't just I don't just cater to whatever Apple tells me to buy. When Fab goes running out to the store, sends his assistant out to the store the next day. I mean, you kind of do need a new phone. I'm getting one when I'm not paying for it without the upgrade. I'm sorry, Fab is rich. He's got, you know, he's still selling records. He can't deny still selling on. What's funny is there's iTunes. a number in here that never was my number. I don't even know what number that <laughs> so is. What so why'd you give me that? A Fugazi I've number. Never gave that you means you number. gave me a Fugazi number that's I've been never sitting. Gave you that so no, I, I have can't. four things in there. You got like Fab Five Freddy's number or something <laughs> that under my. Like that's so I have two. I have two phone numbers and two email addresses. None of them are good. You got a BlackBerry.net email in. <laughs> is that bad? Yeah, his, no, no. The one I have for him is a BlackBerry. But why wouldn't you delete that? You know that's not. Well, what if he's what if he's still committed to BlackBerry? Because he never calls me. Just, I don't. I gotta be it, honest. Is this one of these contacts you just have in your phone that I, you've I, never called anybody? Before I gotta be in honest. I've only reached out to him maybe like one time. I've never really bothered him before. I didn't we ever have even, we have called you talks when they see each other, but I've ne like he's I've never, never reached out. Well, maybe this is the never reason we're not getting these even invites. when these, even when this number or emails was legit. <laughs> I've never got a contact. He's never hit me for anything. That's true. I've so. never bothered him. I don't think. I forgot when I when you gave me the jerseys for the party. I think I yeah. That was the one time I saw you and you just did yeah, it. You were very we cool. Just, we just. I like Fab. I gotta say, Fab is one of the more laid back, cooler New York dudes around. Like you don't you don't really you don't seem to trip off very much. I mean, I I, I I only trip when it's a need to trip. I think that's. I think certain people are a lot more sensitive than I am on certain things and. You know, I do have a sensitivity towards, you know, I, I like to be respected. I like to treat people as, you know, you, you I treat people with respect, so I expect the same treatment. And that's, I think that's how you should move as a human being, not even just, you know what I'm saying, an artist or... Oh my God, no, you're like Stevie man. Wonder. You're like giving us a, a this is like a speech of how society should conduct themselves. Real shit. <laughs> but no, but people do respect you. Like no one really talk. No one really comes. I, I don't know. Really comes out of their mouth at you though. Mm -mm. You yeah. don't really. You don't, don't really I'm breathe not, that energy. I, say, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't put it out there so I don't. You know, expect to get that in return. So you know, only times that I have. Um, Does Fab have a known beef in in rap history? Is there, a rap, mm. is there a known fab rap beat? There's been little tiffs, but there's never been no... Um, Nothing no, serious. Nobody's got shot outside of Hot 97. Mm. No, 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 thankfully not. Um, And I'm not saying this. This is going to sound again like a troll. It's not. Mm -hmm. Are you and Clue still... You yeah. guys have always been on good terms, right? Yeah. So there's never been a fallout, that sort of... eight That, that sort of that really. obligatory thing that happens with the first person? Never yeah, happened. Yeah, that never really happened. I mean, we've had disagreements about things, um, but we've never had a... a 
like I guess of recent, like a Birdman, Little Wayne kind of. You never had an EPMD. Out. No one got tied up in someone's house or anything like that. Nah, it's a shame when that happened. It's no. My favorite, by the way, of all the crazy rap beef stories and getting back together. The fact that EPMD had like a kidnapping and like duct taping, oh, and, like God. craziness. Who got kidnapped and duct taped? I can't ever remember which way it went. Okay, but I know that they're fine now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is like. Un- and I've That's kind of hard to come back from. Yeah, I, I know. know. How fine I would if somebody be if you... duct taped my mouth and kidnapped me, I don't know if we could be cool. <laughs> I just after imagine that. in a chair with like rope and like. You know what? The duct tape. I, may, I may have made up the duct tape okay. part, <laughs> but but there was like a run up in someone's house. There was a run up in the house mm-hmm. situation, and they recovered. And it was a kidnapping though. Like somebody was I, I physically removed. And I could have. I could have added the kidnapping oh, part God. as well. But this the thing story is, is getting more fraudulent as it goes but, on, man. But there was a breaking and entering. That part's a fact. Someone went into someone's. Was house. it a breaking and entering, or did somebody left the door? <laughs> Somebody left Did the door open and they walked in, in like, <laughs> like, yo, yo, anybody home? <laughs> by the right, time right. it got to you, it was, what a, I was, gonna a, say was kidnapping. <laughs> Eric and Parrish have been to each other's house. Oh, that's okay. all I'm willing, that's all I'm to say. Um, is there any dream collaboration out there for you that you have not done yet? Um, Two, I guess Eminem and Nas. We've, I think me and Nas uh, might have. I don't even know if we might have been on us. Like a you song, got put on feature. the same. Yeah, right. but I mean like an actual. You but you know. guys have to know each other by now, right? Yeah, me and Oz are, are, are cool, man. Chop it up, everything. Has it, you, have you never made the official ask? No, nah, I mean for me, I'm. I, it, it's built off of even on my collaborations. Most of the time, especially from my side, it's built off a of relationship, and um, you know, it, it the right timing of or the right record. Um, so that's where it's been with 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 um, Nas. It's just you know finding the right joint and finding the right song. Cause I even believe that collaboration, you want to hear it in the right. Mm. But that could be. Terms. Let's be honest. That could be a major collaboration. If you right. and Nas did a record, that's that's like a Hot 97 smash without even listening to it. Right. That's a that's a great record for New York for hip hop in, in general. So I, you know I think it just needs to be the right record. It's not a a record you just kind of. Uh, throw together like yo I'm gonna send you this in the email and it's like some down south beat with with somebody auto tune singing no no that it. has like, to be you know what I mean this it has, has to, to be, be the thing. right record who's you know featured in the young OG project uh Chris Brown mm-hmm. um a new guy by the name of Fellas is on there um Trey Songs and Nicki Minaj oh actually wait a minute that song didn't get cleared yet so so it may or may not be there it's, we we might we may do a later physical copy so the, oh it's digital only to start yeah it Got starts it. off for, for Christmas it's Trey Day, Songz that's and Nicki on the same song yep okay that song has them both on there uh, who else is on the project why is, but my mind draw a blank at this point uh, French Montana Frenchy uh, shout out to French Montana another uh, New York guy holding it down it's, I used a lot of new guys too because since I was fusing 2014 with the 90s. I kind of wanted to bring their sound mm-hmm. into the into a '90s sound. So like me and Chris Brown's song is Uchi Wally done over, but mm-hmm. um, literally Uchi Wally done over. Like you took the beat, you flipped the beat. Yeah, some of the some of the joints are flips. Some of them are just inspired by. Some of them have like an excerpt from a '90s song. I hope it's better than Uchi Wally. I'm not. I know that sounds crazy. Everyone hates me. I'm not an Uchi Wally fan. I hate you. Yeah. I, I was offended by Uchi Wally. I was like, oh, it sounds like a. It sounds I don't like think a that's your ring. type of. I don't think that's your type of joint you it's know not I mean? my type of joint that's all you guys that beat is crazy though you can't front on it it is it's a crazy sample i do love i love the sample but like little young, Pretty young thing, thing go around, around your neck with my tongue but you know the lyrics though i do i was like i don't need to hear about nas a security guard getting a blowjob like i'm just mm-hmm. good on that um what about your man i never thought about it that way <laughs> what about I, never, you? I don't think like that <laughs> what about you? that's what it was what about your homie from uh ohio molly what, yeah, what about Molly the Martian? He's a, he actually produced Lituation. He produced Lituation. He produced... Uh, my mind is just blank on all the... Uh, you know what? Let me pull it up on my but phone. Is, uh, but real quick, tell people a little bit about Molly, uh, Molly the Martian. This guy's, Molly is a that? guy from um, Toledo, Ohio, that was introduced to me um, through my brother, Paul Kane. And, uh, because my brother actually... This is a, a story that's going to go all kind of ways. My brother moved to Ohio for like two years he lived with his father in Ohio and um you know I guess met Molly somewhere in that that time and uh Molly was a guy who was doing music and he kind of like picked up his bags and came to New York 
on some like I'm a pursuit of music thing and uh, got connected to me and, and you know, stayed down and worked within us, like, you know, did whatever he had to do, mm-hmm. you know, presented beats, did w- w- whatever, you know what I'm saying? Just in-house, whatever. And um, to the point where he, you know, started doing production for me and worked on the mixtapes. And one thing I like doing, when I like working with new talent as well because it's like opening the door, so to say, you know what I'm saying? I haven't started a record label and had all the artists, but I have, you know, given a lot of opportunity to up and coming artists and uh, producers. So that's what place he fell in. And um, now he's, you know, kind of work with us. He's within my, within my, my team, you know, kind of is like my music director, but also still does production. And, and uh, it's a it's a great story that, you know, somebody can come from a small town, Ohio, and come to New York and, you know, make a name for itself. And, and, and he's going to, and, and also, and he's a dope MC himself. Yeah, he also spits himself, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's even almost put that on the back burner to kind of, produce, you know, to produce and, and, and be what needs to be for me, and which is another you know, a selfless thing that a lot of people won't do in this generation as well. No, absolutely. And uh, I, I also, you know, like that given the opportunity for when these projects come around that, you know, these are guys that I work with on a mixtape and, uh, you know, they might have worked for free in that thing and put in long hours. But then when you get the chance when an album come, you get, all right, now, you know what I mean, show show and improve. You know, you get a chance to, to, to be a part of something that will get you a check and will get you money. And uh, I like to provide that opportunity as well. You know what I'm saying? So it's not You're a man like, of the people, fam. I mean, I just do what's fair and do what's, try to do what's right. You and know again, I mean? and this is why no one wants to come at Fab's neck. Yeah, and this is Talk why I have it. a problem with you. You know what I'm saying? Because I know, know I'm going to come at you. Uh, yo, right. Ebro, note to self, one of the reasons Fab doesn't fuck with me is I've never gone at him before. Like, we've never had a conflict to make up for. So sometime around album time? No, no it's really not about the conflict. It's about the care. Like, it's, it's, it's just no care there for you to even... See? I'm just you know like, Fab... <laughs> It's a deeper, it's a deeper, he's looking at the surface, like, yo, we don't have a problem. Like, yo, wait, I, every time you bring up Fab's name from now, I'm just like, Fab. Like, this kid couldn't be a problem for me in this city, but it's just, Whoa. you know, it's just the care, you know what I'm saying? Like, you All know, right. I don't hear much excitement. Listen.